Personal branding is a term that gets thrown around a lot these days, especially with the rise of social media where establishing a marketable personality can lead to some pretty big ducats, money. But as the saying goes, there's nothing new under the sun. People have been milking their fame for cash for way longer than Instagram and YouTube have been around. And if you grew up in the 80s or 90s, chances are you might remember a very special type of cartoon, the fictionalized celebrity personality cartoon. I don't want to be on TV. For a while, these things were everywhere. There was Mr. T. Mr. T. Pro stars featuring Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, and Bo Jackson. Pro stars. MC Hammer's Hammerman. Hammerman. Chuck Norris Karate Commandos. Chuck Norris, man of action. Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. <laughs> Camp Candy, and so on. And while we no doubt have lots of awesome childhood memories associated with these shows, they aren't exactly known for being top notch in the quality department. I think the reason my dad left is because I told him I quit Little League Baseball. I kept striking out. See what I mean? His mouth isn't even moving. Also, I wish I met Wayne, Mike, and Bo when my parents got divorced. That would've been pretty sweet. But given how these sorts of shows came into being, the lack of polish probably makes sense. Unlike superhero cartoons or cartoons based on books or movies, these shows were produced quickly, often cheaply, and were designed to cash in on a recognizable face without having much or any narrative history to draw upon. Uh-oh. In other words, despite our good memories, some of these shows straight up bamboozled us. <laughs> Now, let's fast forward to the early 2000s and add another celebrity personality cartoon to the mix. That cartoon is Jackie Chan Adventures. I am Jackie. Cartoonalizing, that's a word, the celebrity persona of martial arts master Jackie Chan, Jackie Chan Adventures was different from a lot of the other celebrity cartoons in that it did have a large library of stories to draw inspiration from. Because in addition to kicking ass, <laughs> Jackie had been a filmmaker and storyteller for decades. And the thing is, JCA is actually very, very good. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that other celebrity cartoons aren't good in their own campy, fun, nostalgic ways, but Jackie Chan Adventures holds up. Even though it's a comedy cartoon, the show has really strong season arcs, it's chock full of visual storytelling and pretty solid jokes. We must be very cautious. <laughs> you listen to a cookie? Evening, Chan. Never mock the cookie and has really likable and well-written characters, despite the show starting off in part as a cynical ploy to make money off a celebrity. Oh, and you know what I just learned upon research? Jackie didn't even do his own voice. Bad D, bad D, bad D. Did y'all know that? Cause after all these years, I just assumed, anyway. The end result is a show we can all treasure. It may seem ironic to make Jackie into a cartoon, given that of all the people to put into the reality-bending world of animation, Jackie Chan is one of the few people on Earth who can actually do cartoon-worthy feats in real life. Jackie Chan Adventures is actually pretty true to his real-life action style, and the show also provides an awesome on-ramp to enjoy the wider world of his amazing films. Wow! Here's everything you didn't know about Jackie Chan Adventures. Jackie Chan Adventures ran on Kids WB from September 9th, 2000 to July 8th, 2005. After several mergers, sales, and rebrands, Kids WB still somewhat exists today as WB Kids. JCA ran for five seasons with 95 episodes in total. Each season had around 13 episodes, except the second season, which had 39. The second season was not only longer because of a longer story arc, but also included additional episodes that take place in the season one timeline. More on that later. The show is grounded in Jackie Chan's beloved public persona as an action comedy star, and Cartoon Jackie has the same basic demeanor as Jackie's film characters. He's kind, loyal to friends and family, prone to bending the rules in order to do the right thing, doesn't really pick fights, but is absolutely ready to do anything and everything death-defying and ass-kickingly necessary when f***ed with. Unlike most of Jackie's movies, however, Jackie Chan Adventures has lots of supernatural elements. Jackie's cartoon character is an archaeologist in San Francisco who works in his uncle's antique shop. He's also taking care of his niece from Hong Kong, Jade, and gets frequent visits from his friend slash super spy, Captain Black, who is my second favorite captain after, yup, you guessed it, Captain Ron. <laughs> I can love that movie, that's my jam. But it wouldn't be a Jackie Chan story without some enemies, and Jackie has plenty of those. Shendu the Dragon Demon, Valmont the long-haired, suave, ambiguously European man, the Ice Crew, Enforcers, Goons, Spirits, Evil Wizards, you name it. Now as we tend to do here on EYDK, let's take a look at the opening credits. 
Now, as you can see, the real Jackie morphs back and forth into Cartoon Jackie, which is exactly how they tricked my ass into thinking Jackie did his own voice work. But this trick wasn't introduced by Jackie Chan Adventures. Celebrity cartoons have been doing this for decades. Although the intro doesn't have any words, the end credits do. The song is Chance the Man, and it was performed by the band Wheatus. Y'all remember Wheatus, right? I'm just a teenage dude now, baby. The song was written to the tune and structure of the band song Punk Ass Bitch. Punk Ass Bitch? Punk Ass Bitch, somebody said. We couldn't find any interviews with Wheatus talking about their experience with Jackie Chan Adventures, but this is a snippet from them introducing the song at a live show. I wasn't there. Are you familiar with the Jackie Chan cartoon for which this song was repurposed? Yeah! Christopher Ward wrote the music for the majority of the show, with Jim Latham also credited on 13 episodes. Both are veteran composers for TV and movies with credits on projects as diverse as Bad Boys and Dragon Tales. Although Jackie didn't do his own voice work, the show did feature little interview snippets at the end with the real Jackie Chan telling stories or giving wholesome advice to the audience. Remember those? Hey Jackie, if you could be a dinosaur, which kind would you be? If I want a dinosaur, I want to be a brontosaurus because big, but only eat vegetable. I actually think these are a really sweet twist on the lessons you often would find at the end of OG cartoons. These are a little less, what's the word? Can't. Remember, running away. Leads nowhere. Now I know. And, and knowing, knowing is half, half the battle. battle. Since kids' cartoons are generally comedic in nature, it's probably no surprise that a lot of them essentially use the most successful comedy storytelling structure in TV history. The situation comedy, or sitcom. Hey. Hey. <laughs> now, apologies if this is old news to you, but just in case, Sitcoms make use of a structure when in a given episode, a funny problem is introduced to a familiar bunch of characters, and by the end of the episode, everything's been completely solved, and we're back to where we started at the beginning of the episode. Return from whence you came. Lots of cartoons we've looked at in the series make use of this structure, even ones that aren't explicitly comedies. The Real Ghostbusters, Super Mario Bros. Super Show, Captain Planet, Mega Man, and more. And we're not saying that's a bad thing. Sitcom structure is fun and can be played in all sorts of inventive ways. Oh, I see. What's really cool is when a kid's comedy can borrow some structuring tools from drama shows, like season-long arcs and fundamental changes to characters, and use them successfully. And that's exactly what Jackie Chan Adventures does. Jackie, you smoked him! Yeah, Jackie Chan Adventures features a new adventure in almost every episode, but those adventures are stepping stones along a larger story that's told over a whole season. And stones is actually a good word in this case, because the 12 Zodiac Talismans in the first season are iconic. I remember looking forward to the discovery of the next stone and his powers as the season went on. The same is true for the Oni Masks, the Demon Portals, Shendu's siblings. I mean, for real, if you haven't seen this show or haven't seen it in like 20 years, it's definitely worth the rewatch because every season is its own adventure. And while subtle changes in the protagonists are cool, one thing we love about Jackie Chan Adventures is its flexibility with its villains. For example, Valmont is arguably the main villain for the first two seasons, but by the end of the series, he's been so outclassed that he comes back as a guy who can't even get a job working for the new main villain. I'm looking for henchmen, bone crushing, Skull caving henchman! And how about Toru going from villain ah. to hero? I thought it was your move, Sensei. But one of the coolest things about JCA is how it takes cues from Jackie's movies. In the first episode alone, there are loads of references. For instance, Jackie's job as an archaeologist and artifact hunter, combined with the episode's Indiana Jones esque opening. <laughs> take a cue from Jackie's Raiders of the Lost Ark influenced film, Armor of God. Another example is when Jackie is practicing on the blocks, which is right out of Wheels on Meals. Oh, and fighting on a playground? Come on, that can only be from Police Story 2. <laughs> Notice how the show lets us see the action cleanly and clearly, just like the movies do. Visible, well choreographed action is one of Jackie's core principles as an artist, so it's great to see the show honoring that, even though lots of cartoons use chaotic, muddled action to try and make things seem more dramatic. Also, I gotta shout out the episode Invisible Mom when a snake bite causes Jackie to engage in a woozy fighting technique, reminiscent of the fighting style in my personal favorite, The Legend of Drunken Master. <laughs> But there are a lot more references for you to check out. Keep an eye out for episodes with suspiciously similar names to movies like Rumble in the Bronx, Enter the Dragon, Project A, and Shanghai Noon. Wait, no, Rush Hour? They made three of those, come on. 
Thank you, thank you. It also wouldn't be a proper look back at a cartoon we love without pointing out some of the random shit. Like Finn's disco outfit. Dude, no one dresses like that anymore. It's like the year 2000. Get with the program. You should be dressing more like this. Is Captain Black a Nick Fury ripoff? Maybe. But who cares? We still love him. How about predicting the future? The video phone looks exactly like a Game Boy Advance SP. One more thing. Always remember when you steal a skateboard out of the trash, you gotta also steal the helmet that's also conveniently in the trash to protect your head. Consider that a PSA. Jackie Chan Adventures was created by John Rogers, though the credit in each episode says, which based on WGA rules about how writing credits are listed implies that Duane Capizzi and Jeff Klein did a development pass on the story and core concept after Rogers' initial work. Rogers also credits David Slack as doing a lot of the heavy lifting with Capizzi on plotting out the first season. Rogers was a TV writer and producer, but also has some feature film credits too. He wrote the scripts for Catwoman, The Core, and the story for the first Michael Bay Transformers movie. I'd assume he'd like Catwoman stricken from the record. What a perfect idea. There are 33 total credited writers on IMDb. While most of the writers are career animation people, a few have live action TV on their resumes. Greg Klein ruled for an episode of America's Most Wanted, which officially gets his first and probably its last shout out in this series. Don't go away. Hilary Bader wrote for Star Trek The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. Eddie Guzelian went on to be one of the main writers on The Walking Dead. That's actually a pretty good career arc. Good on you, Eddie. Among other producers, aside from Jackie himself, was Willie Chan, who was Jackie's personal manager and eventual producing partner from the 1970s all the way until 2009. Though they had the same last name, Jackie and Willie weren't related. One more thing. Although the character of Uncle is purportedly based in part on both Willie and Jackie's father. Unfortunately, Willie passed away in 2017. Richard Reynes also produced. He's best known for being a producer on a little known show that's flown under the radar for about 30 years. Simpsons. Woohoo! There were 24 directors on Jackie Chan Adventures. As I mentioned before, the directing on this show was happening on a pretty sophisticated level, and it shows in the director's other impressive credits. Their work touches many, if not most, of the iconic cartoons of the 90s and 2000s. DC animation classics like Justice League and Static Shock, Samurai Jack, Johnny Bravo, The Boondocks, and many more. Also, directors Brian Andrews and Jane Wu went on to work on the story art teams on a lot of MCU's big movies. So clearly, Marvel thought these peeps had some visual sophistication too. Series director Anthony Chun also directed the Neo Yokio Christmas special, which I personally consider an absolute masterpiece. EYDK has looked at some cartoons with really small casts, and in certain ways that makes sense, as talented voice actors can cover multiple roles. And also, that's a way for productions to save. <laughs> but that's not the case with JCA. This show has a stacked acting roster. 105 people contributed voice work according to IMDb. As I said before, Jackie didn't play himself. I'm still not letting that go. I mean, Mr. T played himself in his animation series, so I pity the fool who doesn't do his own voice. Don't make me laugh. Jackie was voiced by James Tsai, who's also done voice work for King of the Hill and Avatar The Last Airbender. How do we know you're not Fire Nation spies? Stacey Chan, no relation to Jackie here either, played Jade. Mondo Coolio, Jackie! She was actually around her character's age when she started playing the role and didn't continue her career as a professional actor. Instead, she went to Stanford and apparently works for Google now. Nice! Sab Shimono voiced Uncle. Coffee is the only thing keeping Uncle's ancient heart beating. You want dead Uncle? He's been a working character actor doing voice and live action for decades. He's known for Avatar The Last Airbender, TMNT Part 3, Samurai Jack, and Waterworld. Maybe he's a smoker spy. Another classic. Other standouts include Clancy Brown as the Grunt Ratso. Don't know. Sounded good. Voice wise, he plays Surtur in Thor Ragnarok, the iconic Lex Luthor in Superman the Animated Series, and of course, Mr. Krabs in SpongeBob SquarePants. How can you make money with such a stupid idea? Adam Baldwin voiced Finn. Want a little coffee with your cream there, Big V? Although there are many acting Baldwins, Adam has no relation to Alec and his brothers. What the hell were you thinking? He's probably best known as Animal Mother in Full Metal Jacket. You're a real comedian. Julian Sands played Valmont. You were telling me one man stopped you. He was something of a prestige heartthrob in the 80s in A Room with a View and has had a long career as a character actor since. Character acting icon James Hong played Dao Long Wong and other characters. I, Dao Long Wong, cannot allow his chi to be awakened. He's in classics like Big Trouble in Little China, Blade Runner, and Chinatown. He also turned 90 years young this year, which is pretty f awesome. That's a bit off topic. There are plenty of big names buried in the small or one-off parts. Names like John DiMaggio, who plays Bender on Futurama. Bite my shiny metal ass. Miguel Ferrer and Michael Horace from Twin Peaks. George Takei. Oh my. Lucy Liu, Ron Perlman. 
David Carradine, Maurice LaMarche, Jeff Bennett, who voiced Johnny Bravo, B.D. Wong, Dan Castellaneta, and that's not even everyone. There's a lot more. Pretty impressive for a kid's cartoon that ran for five years. Whoa. As with all great cartoons, Jackie Chan Adventures had a little merch to go along with it. Playmates produced a line of figures for the show, and Burger King also produced a line of premium toys to go with their Burger King Big Kids meal. Remember when fast food chains were on that Big Kids kick? McDonald's had the mighty Big Kids meal? F it, I'm still a Big Kid, f that. There were also video games based on the show, one released for the Game Boy Advance and the other for the PS2. But of course, the greatest resource of related media are the loads of Jackie Chan films, so if you haven't already, go check them out. And also, as a side note, it's really hard to find all the seasons of Jackie Chan Adventures on DVD. Warner Brothers, can you please release these as a set? Come on. Please! In the end, we've got a lot to be thankful for with Jackie Chan Adventures. As far as celebrity-based cartoons go, this one could have ended up a lot more cynical and cash-grabby, but instead, it stands out proudly on its own, while also introducing kids to the world of probably the greatest stunt comedian since the silent film era. One more thing! Oh, that's right. Thanks, Uncle. It's worth mentioning that the show followed a slew of high-quality cartoons from the WB, including some that were produced by Steven Spielberg. Animaniacs, which came to WB after its initial run on Fox Kids, Pinky and the Brain and Hysteria, both of which debuted on Kids WB. I mean, these shows were smart, pretty nuts, but very good. Were the people at Kids WB operating under the principle of, hey, we don't make bad shit around here? It certainly seems that way. Maybe everyone should adopt that. I don't know. What are your memories of Jackie Chan Adventures? And where do you rank it when it comes to celebrity cartoon shows? Let us know in the comments. One uh more thing. Hey, thanks for watching. For more EYDK, make sure you click over here. And for new episodes I drop every other week, subscribe over here. So here and here. Punk ass bitch. <laughs>